to start. Oh, you're not today. paying us yet. But hey, whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> All right, guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. Uh, we're starting off a big, big season five, you know, part one going on here, guys. I'm really excited. We're over halfway there. So, uh, you know, just, you know, once again, it's May the 4th, so May the 4th be with everybody, but uh, mm-hmm. excited to have everybody here today, and we'll just start off real quick and jump right into it, but before we get into it, DP, let everybody know where to find us. May the 4th be with you guys. Nerdstockopedia.com, people, make sure that you're, if you're listening to us and you're listening to podcasts, go to our website, Nerdstockopedia.com. Um, You will find all the links at Nerdstockopedia on Facebook, Twitter, and also on Instagram on the social media. Also, if you are um, listening to us on a podcast, make sure you listen to us on TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, um, iHeartRadio, um, Google Play, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, Stitcher, we are there. Um, also, leave us some feedback. Go on to our forums on Facebook, Carbonite Body BS um star wars group um leave us some good feedback leave us some memes um we got some good you know content and everything and we love your feedback for the show and also if you want to directly email us nurse at nerdpsychopedia.com well said well said and as we jump right into it hitch uh what are your first thoughts on this uh first part of the season five we're in already some exciting meetings uh for star wars canon i saw guerrera shows up here on onderon uh, very, very interesting introduction to Saw being sort of a, an a-hole, uh, really aggressive, uh, you know, character, wanting a lot of these accolades. It's, it's so interesting knowing, like, the end point of his story, like, seeing and seeing its beginning, um, which is maybe the opposite of how this was even produced. I'm realizing now this was, in a, this was before Rogue One, so this was uh, obviously the first stuff. Super interesting there. Um, we get to see a little bit more of Jedi tradition. Because we get to see uh, these crystals, the caves, and how a Jedi youngling sort of begins the process of constructing their lightsaber. We even get a little bit of a Harry Potter sort of uh, situation <laughs> where we have lightsaber construction with different lightsaber cores and, and, and you know, a quirky sort of uh, professor, so to speak. I don't they even call him professor? Anyway. anyway. <laughs> uh, not that it was a ripoff. I'm no, just kidding. Um Some interesting, really cool stuff. Interesting character development for Ahsoka, too. We see her taking the lead, being the uh, real, like, head person in both on Onderon and with these younglings. So we see her developing as a character. Some really interesting stuff in the beginning of Season 5. Yep, yep. And what do you think about that, uh, DP? We'll go to you. Yeah, I'm loving, like, the whole arc of, like, the building of the, um, like, say, Ordo Tolk Hyper Crystals. Yeah. Is that is that what they're called? Okay. Um, see, I'm getting it. I am getting a little bit of it. <laughs> um, so I'm loving like the whole construction, but what I really loved about though this particular set of episodes, as far as like, you know, with the younglings and everything, uh, how with all the politics that's going on in like, you know, with like Palpatine and um, you know, um uh, the Jedi and everything and um uh, you know, Count Dooku and stuff and you know, the infiltration, you know, of um, Palpatine, you know, whatever he's doing and everything um, is getting back to the core of the, this episode of episodes to get back to the core of what Star Wars is about to me. You know, it's about hope. It's about um, finding your own way, finding, um, you know, you're looking in, you're looking in the mirror, looking at your sense of self. They had to, 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 in order to find their crystals, they had to each find a part of themselves um, in order to get that particular crystal that was made specifically for them. You know, the one, you know, it brought his crystal back to, to, to Yoda and he thought he, you know, he thought he was good to go. And then he, you know, he looked at the, um, the, the ice or whatever. I mean, he looked at crystal and it turned out to be ice that just, you know, went away and he had to go back and get his crystal because, you know, he, it, it wasn't, it wasn't his time yet. And then the one part where, um, you know, the youngling and, um, uh, was about to leave the other youngling in the ice and everything. And I was like, oh, my, that's just not going to play well. But he had came back and saved her um, from getting, um, 
from getting, you know, just just stuck in there and then found his crystal at the same time and everything. So I just thought that whole that whole set just really brought it back to the core of what Star Wars to me is all about. You can get into all the politics and everything about, um, you know, which Star Wars is like an added bonus. But the essence of what the pol politicians in Star Wars are missing is what these younglings are being taught within this particular set of episodes. I agree. I agree. And what about you, Ken? Yeah, exactly, uh, DP. So that and this set of episodes, this was the first one. Now I've, I've watched all, of them, but these were the first ones that really had me glued. Like my attention was was grabbed from the big from the beginning. I couldn't take my eyes off. In fact, I did go a few episodes beyond seven because I couldn't stop. I think the these episodes, like DP said, these are getting back to the what Star Wars is: a group of heroes. With, with a task at, at hand and working together to get there. And I think the younglings are a perfect example how they helped each other through the gathering. So they all passed the test. It was like no youngling left behind. Um, it's a very good story there. I thought Saw Guerrera, like Hitch, T, T, you know, Hitch said, you know, uh, it was like the, um, how would you call him? Sort of, uh, to me, he seemed, sort of seemed like Luke, how Luke was brash and, thought he could go out and win the war by himself. I mean, he basically... I bulls want rats in my... You know what I mean? I bulls I want yeah. rats at home. They're not much bigger than that. Yeah, he was very cocky. Yeah. Uh, he had a lot of fire, spit, and vinegar in him. Um, almost uh, almost like he'd already experienced things. And what he was... What we were seeing was, was look brash and cocky, but he actually had sort of a more mature um, upbringing, or there was some more, you know... Uh, he, he experienced that maybe we weren't really catching, but I, I thought he was more like the Luke Skywalker slash Han Solo character. I mean, it was a lot of good stuff and it really, a lot of the heart, a lot of the, Oh, you know, um, it's, that's no moon. It's a space station. There are a lot of those like one liners in it now. So I think they're starting to get back to the, the nuts and bolts of what star Wars is um, in the, in these episodes not so much of the politics. We had to have that because that's where we were dropped into the middle of the whole story. Like all this po political uh, pro turmoil had happened and had settled. And now we're left with just the rebels and the empire. So how did all that happen? But the, this they're filling in those blanks. But now we're getting to more like the just the characters, just the the heroes, the the uh, the partnerships and, and helping each other. It was the it was a, I think DP hit it right on the nail on the head there. Right. And um, I'll shock all you guys real quick. So I'm uh -oh. very, 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 very proud of this arc for Obi-Wan because this is the Obi-Wan that, you know, I've seen before that I wanted to see in the movies. And we'll get into episode three, but that's kind of him in the back half of episode three. Uh, the lightsaber scenes, the combat between him, uh, <laughs> Maul, it was phenomenal. I mean, and, and the fact that it's, you know, he takes Savage's arm off. I mean, it's just, and it, it kind of shows you, even with dark side users, you know, when his brother Savage is there and took that blow, how emotion even plays in on the Sith. I mean, you saw how vulnerable Maul became at that point when his brother was injured to where Obi-Wan probably could have struck him down, but, you know, which is why he forced pushed him away. So I, I kind of, it kind of shows you both sides of the force, whether you be on the light side or the dark, why connections and why maybe these, you know, relationships aren't uh you know seen as positive because it takes your eye your, your focus off the main goal for the sith which is you know distress you know or more anger more um you know rage and carnage and to see that break or that kind of emotion break was really cool you know for a character development from maul's point of view obi-wan's I mean, got the special sauce against those guys <clears throat> you can't you can't beat them you can't beat they can't beat obi-wan it's like a weird, it's like a matchup thing almost. You know what I mean? You know, some boxers, like they have a particular type of defense and like lefties, you know what I mean? They, they fight a lefty and there's nothing they can do. And it's, they're just in, they're just in Dutch. That seems to be like with these guys in Obi-Wan Kenobi for some reason. I don't know why. It's really cool. You know, it's crazy with this being a kid show, how they like kind of took the youngling down and he like struck her like when she was dead already. I was like, man, I'm <laughs> serious. Yeah, for this you don't yeah. usually see that one. You don't usually see this one, right? Exactly. Yeah, we've seen it a like, lot. They, they, it was an bar of the shadow. There were a couple of the shadow people. We saw some POV where the clones were taking them down. They've. You're yeah. right. They've. They've really upped the ante with, like the um, 
like with the war action, it's really been, man, it's gotten a lot more like intense. I think, I think they realized that kids weren't watching this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, the, the whole politics probably just turned them off and it was like, okay, yeah, we need to. Um, yeah, yeah the, the audience here is like 15 or 16 and above. And so we need to up it up. We need to up the ante. We need to make it a little more dramatic. And the, the battle scenes really like real video gaming, real POV. Right? That's because they, they were like, the kids aren't watching this. They're not yeah. watching. I, I well, thought there was one particular shot <clears throat> where there was like a corridor shot uh, in the last in episode seven where they were or episode six where they were zooming in. They were like zooming in on the, the hatch. Right. And it really mm-hmm. felt convincingly like a star Wars, like movie hallway. So they're, they're doing some good work with the art direction for sure. Yeah. I'm loving like the, every time they go into like the snow stuff and the ice and everything. I mean, it seems like the, the animation just steps up a bit. I mean, I, I love like uh, Ahsoka's like whole outfit, <laughs> you know, um, she, she's just visually decent to look at as far as like, mm-hmm. um, 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 her whole whole stature period and everything but like the the way they had just style her i could see why the fans were probably off put by her in the beginning because when you i guess when you're entering this whole thing it's all about like the skywalkers and stuff and then you're bringing like you know these these certain elements and everything that's just not really adding you know to that you have to really get used to um you know other characters that are you know you know to the to the to the uh, attached to, like the main characters and stuff so i could see why they got like a little off put by her but the way they develop her up till now i mean it's just it's just, like i said like in a few episodes ago it's, it's just phenomenal um but yeah the 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 um the snow type the the way they do the animation as far as that just the visual outlooks and you know outlook as far as that i mean it's it's this show was aired on Adult Swim, so I mean, it certainly wasn't for kids. <laughs> you know, um, with, with with us, you know, um, looking at whole Star Wars thing as being for kids, for it to be aired on Adult Swim when these episodes that came out, or at least part of the time, just goes to show how much they wanted to to really mature, level up Star Wars from what you know Lucas was probably you know intended on doing. And this show sort of had bad luck to have been produced in the order it was because it came in the, like in the washout of the prequel trilogy. And so I, it didn't get the right sort of attention. I mean, certainly from, from people like us who are f- hardcore fans. And I, and I feel like you really can't, you can't get more hardcore than we have a star Wars podcast. <laughs> That's pretty much yeah. as, you know, there's a level there where we were obsessed. Yeah, uh, they should have released this before menace. I mean, honestly, like they should have come, released this in like nine, maybe 1996 and had it built up to Phantom Menace. What would it have been like if George Lucas would have put Menace in the can and just kept, like just been like, nope. And then just started putting this cartoon out for 10 years and then spooling it out like, nope, it's going to be 10 seasons of this. Like, well, when are you going to put that movie out? Eh, when I'm ready. <laughs> well, where, well, but but is it done? Oh, it's it's done. Is it it's good? It's in the is it good? The, the first five minutes are incredible. <laughs> That's all I'll say. And, and the last three minutes are eh. <laughs> no. Like he just starts drawing. He just starts saying stuff like that. Everyone's like, what does he mean? What does he mean? Uh, it's almost fun to sort of pretend like that's what's going on. And, and since that's the story order, which is sort of what we committed to doing here, it's really interesting to see, you know, without knowing about, you know, the monster at the end of the book how interesting it is to think like, where are these characters going to go? You know, and Ahsoka is so interesting because her story is active and important to like the, um, the product, like the new production of star Wars stuff, right? Like her, right. her, because she's Rosario Dawson, because she's being played by this star who's just so cast so well, all of this could read as a, like a prequel to that series alone. And it would be worth the watch. The fact that we're getting so much else, in so many different flavors, this mall revival. We have the series of re- we have this rebellion guerrilla war on, on uh, Onderon. This series where we see Ahsoka take control and fail ultimately, right, and have a and have a failure that costs somebody's life. I mean, this is a dear cost to her. And then we have sort of these pirate this 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 uh, you know this youngling set after that, where she's now in charge of a group of kids and kind of responsible for their safety in total. 
Like there's just nobody else checking up on her. Um, if you just read this as this series as that only, it would be important to have seen. If you're interested in watching Mandalorian season three, if you're interested in watching the Ahsoka series, if you want to be literate in the new Star Wars, this is really like canon. You have to know about this or else it's honestly so much more confusing. Like, how do you know what's even going on? Like, I feel like, how did I even know what was going on when I watched the Mandalorian season one, right? Like, I don't Right. Yeah. Well, that, it, it, the, the story was told so simple as far as Mandalorian. All right, he was he had a task and for an episode, uh, one, two, three, and then that task was done. He was on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened in this next episode, one, two, three, done. And his overall thing was just getting the um, you know, the the child over, you know, to his people and stuff. That was basically it. So it wasn't really a, a lot of history that you needed to know, but the the way that they sprinkled in Clone War stuff to this, I mean mm -hmm. to um the Mandalorian and everything, yeah. <laughs> if you're a hardcore fan and everything, it was a must that you watch this. Series. I mean, you have if even if we take you know even if we take the Ahsoka stuff out of this series altogether, right? Boom, she's gone. She doesn't exist. You still have all this stuff about Boba Fett's origin and how he became sort of this slimy Boba Fett we see in. In episode five and you don't get that anywhere else and so you know let's that's what two of the series coming up two of yeah. them like right there and the obi-wan stuff like you're saying tina chow you know what was obi-wan like as a general and what is that transition from you know one of the maybe the 10 most powerful beings in the universe and a general of space armies to some guy living in the desert right what does that transition look like that you need to know about who he was more than what was in those movies this is this is the 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 Rosetta Stone for all of these shows that are coming out. I mean, even something as simple as, and not in this set, but something as simple as the dark saber and what's going on with that thing, right? I mean, to have to understand what that is first shot, this is an important piece of of the canon. And I'm just gonna say it. I think this is required required watching at this point. I just don't see how how you can really you know, not be versed in these events and, you know, understand what's going to happen in the rest of the produced stuff they're going to produce. Well, it, this ties right into Solo. I mean, this is the beginnings of uh, Darth Maul's Red Faction as well. So, you know, I mean, like I said, they tie it all in together. And the w wild thing is, regardless of who produced what, whether you liked it or not, it this series, and this is, like I said, what, 2007? It's tying everything they did before. It's basically like a, a the ultimate loophole finder. There's these loopholes in Star Wars that exist, and for somehow, you know, 13 years ago, they've tied up all these loopholes before we even got to this point. I can only see what they'll do in the future with the newer comics. And, and they're doing such a good job right now of, of doing that, of piecing this all together. I was just thinking it's making like the last trilogy like even further out of the the mix like completely because there's absolutely no connection between anything that we're doing talking about now to seven eight nine yeah, i mean that's, that's, what, I'm that. that's, what, I that's what i'm telling you guys that, yeah. me me and it talked a bit off cam there for the way it's direct, they're heading they're going to rewrite them yeah they have to they, they, they have, have to because they're there's nothing to. like all these threads we're picking up so like we you know we're coming from a particular spot in the production cycle which is like it's May the fourth, twenty 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 one, which means Bad Batch came out today. So that's where we are. So if you're not, if you're listening to this and it's five, ten years from now, and you're just like running through our backhand <laughs> because we're rock stars, you know that's where we are. So a lot of this stuff at the beyond the Mandalorian and, and Bad Batch, which I think only Team Mitch has seen so far. I don't know the rest of us. So I haven't watched it yet. Uh, all this stuff's coming out in the future, and it, and it just feels like just from looking at what those shows are and what the movies are going to be all the threads that are now that you can see the clone wars sort of putting out there, right? Those are the ones that are getting picked up. And it seems weird because like the sequel trilogy and the original trilogy feel, feel now like the two things that are sort of like together more, right? Seem like the two, the two bits of this that are sent together. And now it feels to me like the, the prequel trilogy and then, like all this new TV are all woven in together by this cartoon series. And so you, you really, 
It's just like you got to know about it. What 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 I think what happened was after um, Disney purchased you know Lucasfilm and everything, um, you know the the whole the whole thing after George sold it, um, I think it was a lot of pressure with the the studio on trying to find out what exactly people wanted out of Star Wars, and to me, it's like none of those people watched the Clone Wars. It was right there all along. You know, uh, 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 it's not like you had to redo the whole thing, but they the the history was being built, you know, all this time and everything within this particular series. You got like the politics, you got like the 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 um, small stuff, you got the bigger stuff, stuff that you could have expanded on instead of trying to make it all about the Skywalker still. You know, mm-hmm. they 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 wanted to, you know, cater to like the the casual um, um, fan, I guess me or whatever, you know, think, okay, well, this is what Star Wars is about. I mean, I don't have to watch the Clone Wars or anything like that, you know, to figure it out. But what, what, what I'm seeing is, is that the, 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 the sequel trilogy just sort of like lost its direction. Um, and without actually looking back at its whole history, not a part of the history, because the Skywalker saga is part of you know this world you got a whole universe and a whole world of world building that was what was done in these you know animated stuff you know um extenuating you know um um canon with uh, uh, the extended uh, uh, extended universe and everything you got a whole lot of world building that has a lot of rich material there and to not really have it connected was like doing the audience a disservice even though they didn't really know about it you know, um, this it's like the blueprints was right there. So all they had to do was just, I guess, call it Dave Filoni. Be like, what should we do with these? Well, <laughs> the wild thing was, is he was in the he was in the picture the whole time. So I mean, it's kind of like the Disney well, how, transaction. How much did he even have to do with the movies? I don't think he really had anything so, to do with the movies. He he was an apprentice the whole time. So this is his early career because he's done other films and whatnot. But he always, <laughs> as he said in his in some of those. Um, Disney Plus series ratings. He's always been around Star Wars. He's more background. He studied. He's been a fan of, but it was one of those things. You got to remember when Disney purchased it, then I'll be blunt about it. It was a business decision off the bat. The first thing when they purchased Lucasfilm for the money they did was get their return on their investment. Within, I believe, I believe of 10 months, Hasbro Toys alone almost paid it off. And then they released a film that was already, I mean, they're in a plus. So the first thing of any major transaction, especially that scale, was just balancing the books and getting your money back. Once they stabilize that, you know, and these were coming out and things are starting to grow, it's just like anything else. You know, the, you know, water the soil and the, the tree started to grow a little bit. But at this point, as Hitch says, and even Kendo, we were, as the fans, when Disney bought it, we were all shut off. I was turned off. It was, you know, cash cows come in, they'll run it into the ground. I mean, it literally for years, it's. Disney destroyed Star Wars. It, you know, it, it took time for this to heal. So, at my, in my point, I just let it go. I read read comic books and expanded universe stuff, which they tried to get rid of and mm. get my fix. But at at this point in time, literally, if we're backdating this, we're as the masses are turned off of Star Wars at this point. It, it took the Mandalorian to get its reputation back. I mean, sure, Ken. You know, you I know you love the uh, sequel trilogy and everything. You love anything Star Wars, so I totally respect that. Um, it took the, the, (laughs) it it took the Mandalorian to really, uh, from what I felt is for being casual to really make people, okay, so this, we could still stick with this and it's still some, it's still some energy left in the, in a product and stuff. Because it seemed like, you know, when Solo came out, people were soft on that. You know, that movie was highly underrated as far as I'm concerned. It was just released at the wrong time, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, And, you know, then the um, other two, you know, stuff came out. And and maybe even the hindsight, if I go back and watch those movies, maybe it still may be some better stuff in there. Not um, seeing like the whole context of what this whole saga is and everything. Because I love Ray. I love like the... um, 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 you know, I, I I love like some of those characters in those movies. It's, it's still some good stuff in there. Episode um, seven's good. I, I think episode seven's a fine movie. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It's, it's a good like one shot, yeah. like Rogue One, you know. But they well, really tr- build that entire sequel off that one film when you really should have been building it off the the middle, like four, four, five, and six, mm-hmm. because that was really the yeah 
part yeah. of the but whole what thing. Is, yeah. What does Rogue One do? And this is this is something I'm thinking because I think we I believe Rogue One to be the de- certainly the best Star Wars movie put out by Disney. I, I feel like that is the case, and I think that it's it's pretty obvious that it's the case. And but what is the the function of Rogue One? Rogue One connects the Clone Wars to mm-hmm. the original trilogy. It's the thing yeah. that yeah, brings it's yep. It brings all the story threads up from the Clone Wars and it connects it to something we knew had to have happened and then gives all the the things that happened already in Star Wars Episode 4, all those things have a greater depth. That running away from Darth Vader at the beginning of Episode 4 forever has so much more urgency now because we just saw what he just did five minutes ago. I, 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 I remember being in the theater and when that scene came on, Cause I was even, I was still casual at that point when that scene came on. The way the crowd just roared, cause that mm-hmm. was probably like the the most that it had chills going through me because it was a powerful, it was such a powerful scene. You and know, you the plans, the plans, right? You saw them. They were on a on a three and a half inch disc. Uh-huh. I mean, that was like for me as a fanboy, that was the best. That was the best <laughs> moment. And it was the, the connection between that and the, and the um every new hope, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's also yeah. so many flavors, like, and that's the thing about that's why it feels so much like like the Clone Wars. I mean, Saw is there. The crystals are a big plot point all of a sudden, right? This energy crystal, like this is a, this is a thing that's sort of picked up in this set of episodes, and and obviously tying it to Anakin directly, right? So Anakin's another thread that's that's uh, sent that way. Uh, I'll tell you this. When I think about like how my perspective has been changed since maybe just since the Mandalorian has come out, I, it feels like the center of what Star Wars is is shifting, and it's shifting yeah. in the favor of Clone Wars. It's shifting in the favor of all these rich plot elements that make it seem like the original the original material is almost the Clone Wars, and everything else is the serial updates, which is right. pretty much what George was going for when he right. created the thing back in. Uh, back well, in seventy six, if 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 Filoni was his Padawan, then Filoni is basically just carrying out George's spirit there. You know, he's spirit. He's spiritually. You know, we got a spiritual George. You know, there, um, and he really love. I mean, you got somebody who really loves the material, like Kevin Feige. He loved more material. DC doesn't have that type of you know head studio person that really loves the stuff. Yeah, you got Filoni that loves this. You know, so he's going to put the heart and the energy into it, and I think man, that's maybe where the um the the sequel things um the 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 sequel trilogy ended up missing. But I guess we'll we'll get back to that at the after the break. That's right. Mortal Kombat! That's right. This week on the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show, Mortal Kombat. You played it in the 90s. Now you can watch it in the 20s. And that's right. They're going to be fighting. They're going to be ripping people's spines out. People are going to be frozen and shattered into a million pieces. And if you don't watch, we're going to send Scorpion to your house and he's going to tell you... Get over that's here! Right. NCFS this week. Pfizer and Moderna, those the, the, those uh, pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies are coming out with a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's great. That's I think that's neat. it's a cure all. Vader's just like it cures everything. <laughs> has a uh, Suka um, lightsaber. That's pretty cool. If if anyone's interested. Oh yeah. It's, okay. It's only available through GameStop. Oh wow! What is it? Asuka's life lightsaber. Oh, they have those at um, Galaxy's Edge. You can actually buy them. Yeah. I have to look at the one on GameStop. Is it a black series? It's it is black series. Yeah, they, I think that's uh, they have all they have Anakin's, they have uh, Obi Wan's, and Man. so and it's a little different color blue than Obi Wan's. It's, it's it's I don't know what they. It's more of a teal blue. A little lighter blue than Obi Wan's. I'm gonna have to trick out. my kid into liking this stuff. Oh, man, yeah. best way to legitimize the whole thing. I'm not buying it for myself. It's for the children. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah. My you're, 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 loves oh, so it, it's four hundred for that one. I'll say it. Whoa, <laughs> for real? That's a little steep. Yeah. 
No, but I mean, it's worth it. Just, just <laughs> think of what you're getting. I mean, you're getting something you can you can pride yourself that you purchased this and you can keep it forever. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you're interested in advertising space on these shows, contact us at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. That's right. These promos are none of them have scripts and they're all pretty decent. So if you want to spend your money somewhere where it's going to have some impact and sound great, go ahead and go to nerdcyclopedia.com and go go to our email. And email us at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com and we'll give you something at least this shitty or maybe shittier. Who knows? We'll yeah. see you soon. And- all forms of payment venmo paypal <laughs> even pro- all empty coins. promises Dash, yeah. <laughs> let's say you have empty promises at this point all coin <laughs> bitcoin promise- everything <laughs> <laughs> so let us know a real professional yeah. outfit here at uh, nerd cyclopedia and remember we love you <laughs> we already do if- Oh, yeah so so yeah um so what i was saying as far as like you know the sequel trilogies and everything um i mean they may be better in in hindsight you know maybe not you know if if, it, if you left it up to t mitch but um but we shall see they had a lot of great characters in in the um in those in those in those stories and i do agree with you t mitch um they had to make their money back so that first movie had to be like a winner a banger you know, to, to get people in it, which, you know, they brought all the, they, they played the hits, you know, they brought, you know, Han Solo back, they bought Luke, they bought, <laughs> they brought like the, um, um, well, the, the people for you, yeah, the people you're familiar with and everything. And, you know, it, it pressed that nostalgic button and it got, it got, it got me up in the theaters, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I guess you got to appreciate it from that perspective. Star Wars has this history I've seen of like the first five minutes being like epic and I'll never forget, you know, taking us away from the Clone Wars when Kylo Ren blocked that blaster shot. I was speechless. To me, the movie was a winner. Like, I didn't care what happened after that. To see a new force ability to like do like freeze frames of blaster shot. I was sold Uh, on the character. That was so epic to me, the way he stopped that blaster frame in the night. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny we talk about this stuff leading from this series and how, like, there's, you know, if you're on a a driven path, you know, we've gone down this path of the fabric of everything wrapped up. And then, like you're saying, will Luke Skywalker series be that link from seven to, you know, from six to seven? Because right now, basically, what Filoni has done is they made a left turn when they should have made a right. Everything's gone a completely direction that maybe George wanted it compared to where, you know, Disney and the other story writers made a right when they should have made a left. So it, it's interesting to see as we've seen these, you know, as season five and, it, it, you know, as we get further down this, I mean, the last two seasons we get in that and we discussed off, off, you know, off camera here and off mic, um, they're not too long. So, you know, we'll be, we have a lot of content coming out for everybody, but there's definitely a lot to cover and we're still not even at episode three, which is even shocking. You know, we, when we go back weeks ago when we started this, we just did it as a pilot, you know, and we, we found out that, you know, we liked it and, and the feedback from the community has been great. So, you know, we, we appreciate everybody who does, you know, slant, you know, reach out to us on the socials and, and interacts with us because it really drives us to want to keep giving out good content. Yeah. Plus, I mean, it, the, 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 the content itself is, is just good. I mean, it'd be one thing if this was just boring, you know, Clone Wars stuff and everything, but the content and the stories that they brought you know, even in those first few episodes where people in the community were saying, OK, those are just, you know, OK episodes to not that great. Those were it was some still it was some some still good gems in there, you know, that kept us moving. I mean, you know, we spent, you know, part of our lives and time, you know, uh, watching this stuff. But, hey, you know, what better way to um to 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 deep dive and to to um, to get into this stuff than just doing that. So, um yeah. <laughs> and I know Ken really appreciated this as well. Um, we talk about the younglings even, you know, as we wrap up this first set of episodes. And when you've seen the different types of species, the one I really I really caught it was the Wookiee Jedi because there were a few of them. But when I looked at the animation from him to the Wookiee that you've seen at the end of last season with Ahsoka and the younglings that they were rescuing – it's night and day. I mean, the look of him, the hair, the crispness, yep. mm-hmm. it, it, the, the animation was just spot. It, it was it's so clean. It just looks so good. Every time I watch something new, like these these episodes are all new to me. I just I I fall more in love with 
with Star Wars and it's just like, I just want to say to them, you know, just everyone can just shut up and they can just take my money as much <laughs> as they possibly take and just keep bringing it on because at this point, I'm at a place where it, even though you let I can't do, so so before I said you know what seven eight nine really did, did terrible but if they would release them now maybe with this mindset that I have now release them now maybe I'd feel a little differently about them but you know I don't know but these this the Clone Wars if you haven't watched the episodes you have got to start watching them uh, because we're gonna have to start. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to start enforcing this somehow. Like, <laughs> let's watch the Clone Wars. You're not allowed to watch anything new that Disney puts out because mm. this, it, this is how you begin to enjoy what Disney's doing now with this, the whole new vibe, the the um, you know the 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 direction and the producing and the, everything that they're doing now and how they're taking the content of what we all love and really doing something with and. and modernizing it but keeping the old school feel to it you got to start here because they're building off of this they really are they're building off clone wars completely they realize it's a world out there it's it's a it's a world more than just the skywalkers it's a world of you know mandalorians mandalore you know you got all these planets that they travel to and it's just so much and pirates and pirates and stuff i'm like this is star wars it's like what? battle droids and battle droids that do comedy they do one line <laughs> <laughs> they're really like uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> i love that about the battle the, the battle droids <laughs> it's so, that's, roger that's roger like, yeah that's what i i loved about that stuff and you know i go back i can watch phantom menace now with a whole new like yeah attitude because i know that that I know where it's going. I know where it's going. It's not going somewhere where I, I want Jar Jar to go with it, but you know what? But it's, it's just got a great, it's just got a great vibe to it. I'm, I'm very happy that I'm, I'm here and, and I have devoted my life as much as I have to Star Wars. Itch, when we do the, the last three, seven, eight, nine, instead of Captain Tarkin, we just got to call him 10 out of 10. <laughs> We're call him 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yep. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. I like that one. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely funny because you know, I remember us discussing months ago of like trying to come up with ideas because of content. And we have to see where we are now. I mean, it's there's so much content out there. Obi Wan's not out yet. Um, you know, on some of our other, you know, Nerd Psycho Comic Flick show, we got Loki coming. There's so much content that we were kind of not really scared, but, you know, we thought about like, how are we going to fill time that we're at the point now that, oh, you know, yeah. we're discussing on trying to find ways to fit it all in because mm -hmm. literally so much is coming out, you know, and we discussed this, you know, last year kind of going into this, that it's getting to the point now that they can go separate from Disney plus and just do a star Wars, maybe Marvel thing, because there's so much. And for the casual person who can maybe only watch so many hours of TV a week, mm -hmm. it's perfect. It's way more than enough. You know, it's we perfect. have Andor coming out. Yeah. There's so much yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I can open a separate checking account or uh, savings. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 believe me, yeah. Disney will love that. <laughs> like, shut up, Disney! Take my money. You got it. You this know this is my Disney account here. So. <laughs> yeah. I I'm, I feel like I'll shut up and let them take my money for some time, based on. And it's so weird because this isn't content that was produced by Disney Plus or for Disney Plus, but it's right. increasing the value yeah. of Disney Plus content because I feel more attached to it. I feel more attached to what they're going to do with these, this bad batch of clones, right? Like I already have an idea because we've been watching this show of like the way they're all their personalities are going to differ and how they're going to be. But what's going to be cool about them too, I already know that and I'm really like and, I'm and, stoked and, for it. And, and look how they're promoting it too. Just look at like the visual of like the um the 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 visual like the the promotional visual of like the um the the series in their first episode or whatever. You got like these five clones um in their not not their faces. You just got their five clones in their in their um in their helmets and everything. And it looks like it's like a a live action um series and everything. I mean, they're really treating it as if it's something serious, not something like silly or anything like that. You know, um this is something that is that you have to really take serious, you know, serious as far as like the bad batch and everything. I love like the visual promo, you know, from from what I'm seeing so far. And so 
I think one of the reasons we want to talk about this is we want to talk about why you're not hearing about the Bad Batch now, because it came out today, and you're probably like, look, this is a Star Wars podcast that came out the day that stupid thing was... It came out. <laughs> why aren't they talking about it? And the answer is because, frankly, we just... We all talked about... We just agree that we shouldn't be deviating from talking about this series and getting off of this story as it's being told. And, and so we're going to do that. We're going to stick with Clone Wars for the next coming weeks until we get it done and that's something that i i was not thinking we would do i mean i know what we were talking about like you said in back in 20 back in 20 back in 2020 <laughs> when we started oh, this journey we were talking about it. maybe we'd stick with it maybe we wouldn't but now like frankly i, I because that's a continuation of this story i want to see it happen in the order i'm watching it now so uh we, yeah. we talked about it we're gonna be on this until I think if we yeah. spaced it out, it was uh, around the 4th of July. 4th of July weekend will be uh, the last episode of the wrap-up for the Clone Wars. So right. we'll keep with it. So the wild thing awesome. is, you know, we're talking about all this stuff coming out. We still have to go, what, 2,000 years back to the High Republic. You know, that's not even... And there's going to be an animated series like this. It's yeah. in, in development now. So, you know, that's we're not, even, we're not even close to talking about that. And, you know, those type of, you know, Jedi, that Jedi lure that will come out, it will literally be fresh. With everything coming out, we're probably good with podcasts till like what twenty forty. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> and that's the thing is like this is just the begin. Like this is just that first lift, right? So like yeah. that. That's the thing. Like every television network obviously is like this. But if you have a bunch of season ones coming out, well, what happens after season one is season two. But you don't stop developing new content because of that. So so these things are all going to lift up and be their own sort of pillars that'll support other other shows that'll kind of hang off them. It's it's really seeing how clone wars is the base of all of this and seeing how it's going to make all these things fit together. gives me a lot more confidence in all this new stuff. I mean, really it does. Cause it's, yeah, it's, this it base is so it solid. It's solid. It does. Yeah. Yeah. The confidence in actually talking about and continue doing this and everything yeah. <laughs> is definitely there because I mean, it, it, it went, it went, yeah, it could have went a different way here, you know, but, um, you know, based on like uh, what we were seeing in, in the movies and everything, but it's good to see that the confidence is there based on like like this world that's just there. Star Wars is what I see here. It, a, a, a lot of um, creators would be frustrated with, um, um, I guess, the IP, if you want to call it, um, of being stuck in a, um, a particular world and only telling a set amount of stories in a set amount of time, and you were, you know, you're really constricted in telling this in a certain period of time because they're going back and you know finding these loopholes or whatever you want to call them and filling those filling in those gaps you can only get into those gaps because everything has to make sense in a way for the whole universe you know for the whole world of star wars to actually make sense and it's the only type of world that i'm i've, I've you know watched a lot of sci-fi stuff that that really adheres to the world itself it has a bunch of different creators that respect the fact that okay, I'm going to play in this um, sandbox and I can only play with this, but I really love this sandbox, you know, uh, but I can only play with this and, I, and I'm fine with that. Just as long as I could go outside of the sandbox and, you know, do my other creative stuff and um, whatever. Marvel can't do that. You know, Marvel has has its own home thing and you know it, it, it doesn't have the same type of universe even though it has a call the marvel universe these creators still go off the rails and do whatever with characters and it doesn't matter if it makes sense whatsoever you know for continuity you know purposes but star wars man it has to make sense from beginning middle and end <laughs> or else you know it's just it's it's a respect there that 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 star wars fans and creators of Star Wars um, who grew up watching this stuff has that just respect and everything about this this material, and they 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 really just love it, and I'm 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 here for it. Yeah, I love the analogy. Uh, sand in a sandbox, Star Wars sand. You, you can mold it, you can you can wet it, and and make it you know make shapes out of it, do all kinds of stuff to it. But it, as long as you keep it, it's it's still sand. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. they've really got a, a really good uh, mindset and how they're dealing with these stories. They're they're molding them. They're putting their own thing into it. They're using like shapes and sculpture and other things, but it's still same. So, and they're not bringing anything else in. They're not bringing any like, you know, 
concrete or cement right. in the box. It's just sand. So, I mean, I like that analogy. That was perfect. Uh, so, so, so here's the thing. So it, it, it may be like some, like some hatred or whatever um, towards the trilogy or the sequel trilogies and everything. But remember the vitriol that came with like the, um, the, the prequel trilogies and stuff and how they made that work, you know, eventually. <laughs> So when when the when the um in the future, um someone's gonna fill in those gaps to make the 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 the, the sequel trilogy I guess makes sense you know you don't necessarily have to rewrite it you know it's there it's candid you know it's it's, it's it happened you know but um but some writer is gonna be creative because it's still a part of the sandbox you know it may have, the, the you you may have like you know put like um too it much be, water like, in it it might be some play doh in the sandbox. <laughs> Like that's probably what I hope it's Play Doh. Play Doh. So you put Play Doh in the sandbox. Now you're like, who made chocolate Play Doh? (laughs) Yeah, who put this in here? You know, no, no, what what, what dumbass put the Play Doh in this? That's Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks is the chocolate Play Doh in this. Don't do it. No, put him down. Put him down. Don't bring him in. Okay, he did it anyway. So let's just play with it and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I've been saying for years that the thing about the prequel trilogy that struck me as as a missed opportunity was that you did, you know, so, okay, who's Anakin Skywalker? And then you did the Clone Wars were starting, and then you do this is how the Clone Wars end, but nothing in the middle. And this really fills that gap, that narrative gap, in a very necessary way that. I think it does a lot of the lifting that episode three doesn't do as far as Anakin's journey into the dark side. Cause I mean, you know, what we know is pretty much going to happen with Ahsoka here is going to be tough for him. (laughs) We know that's going to be, you know what I mean? We end on this cliffhanger where she's been kidnapped and this is his apprentice. Uh, There's so many things that fill in these gaps. If you sort of transpose what this is doing into the sequel trilogy, this would be a series that fills the gap in between eight and nine, in my opinion, because it would, it would, like, eight is to seven what Rogue One in, what episode four is to Rogue One, you know what I mean? The immediate follow-up. And what's missing in that, in that sequel trilogy is something in the middle to connect Rise of Skywalker to the first duology. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it's something, something's gonna come. Something's gonna come and fill it in, you know. I mean, Clone Wars too. I don't know. <laughs> Something's gonna come in and fill that gap, filling that gap, and for future, um, the the, the second iteration of Carbonite Bounty BS <laughs> <laughs> season eight. Yeah. So my pitch, my pitch is this, right? Luke, Luke puts the lightsaber down. He says no. Puts the lightsaber down. This is all Luke's dream. Luke knows there's a girl on some desert planet somewhere, but doesn't know where she is, so he's got to go find Ray. There you go. We're done. There, Redo they it. fixed. Yeah. Redo it. $100 million Bam. to me, into my account. You can buy $100 million worth of ads, Disney. That would be five, it, six ads. And, and that separate Disney account, remember. Right. you got to have a separate right. Disney separate account. Disney account. Yeah, can we gotta... get a, we'll, we'll take him in Mickey Mouse bucks, right? I mean, we'll take it. <laughs> We we'll take it that way. It's all right. Just infinite Star Wars. We'd we'd end up living down there in that stupid amusement park. Anyway, it'd be those crazy. That'd be that crazy guy that you know, always shows up and asks us the dumb questions no one wants to answer. All right, so right. sorry guys. <laughs> I got no, a little it's side good. There. It's good content, but uh, I know that uh, DP has asked about more Mandalorian lore, so we definitely will get this into this next set of, I believe, eight. Through we'll go eight through sixteen. I'm only anybody on the click. I will oh. be after this podcast is done. <laughs> guess where I'm gonna be? Oh, we already know. You got Disney <laughs> Plus on right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we jump into eight through sixteen because this will tie a lot of the stuff into the Mandalorian as well. So um, oh, definitely man. some great content in here for you guys. Uh, a lot of answers that you guys wanted to know that you'll get here soon. So yes. um, we'll definitely get into this next set of episodes, guys. Um, I know it's a, a later one for us tonight, but I appreciate everybody hanging with us. If you're listening tonight, tonight, or if you're uh, going to be on our, um, you know, podcast, listen, when we uh, upload this here the next day or so. So once again, we appreciate everybody sticking with us on this holiday. It's Star Wars holiday um, for all of us. So all fans, we're enjoying this holiday together. But I guess we will convene next week with episodes 8 to 16, which is our part two. And until next week, guys, uh, this is the way. This is the way. May the fourth be with you guys.
All right, so everybody, status quo right now. Best Star which which Star Wars movie is the best one? I'm still Empire Strikes Back. How about you, Tim? Uh, right. Ro Rogue, Rogue Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that one. Yeah, I'll go in Empire Strikes Back. Okay, so two Rogue ones, two Empire Strikes Back. That's where we are right now. All right, may the fourth be with everybody. Nerd Cyclopedia.